Welcome to Prismas Masalticos. I'm Jmix and today we'll be visiting the famous Prismas Masalticos and Bosque de las Truchas. Let's go! So here in Prismas Masalticos, the main attraction are these tall, naturally polygonally shaped columns of basalt rocks. That's why it's called the basaltic prisms in English. Now I've mentioned that these columns were naturally formed. But if you want, I think you can make this at home. You just need 1. Some basaltic lava, 2. A place to cool the basaltic lava and form basaltic rocks, and 3. A whole lot of patience, like maybe at least 100 years or so. Because that's basically how these columns were formed. Basaltic lava from under the earth cooled, and as lava turned to rocks, and the rocks themselves began to cool, they would contract and eventually form cracks. And that's how this place got its basaltic prisms. But this process doesn't happen overnight. It happens over the course of at least 100 years for columns this tall to be produced. Remember when I said that you can make these basalt columns at home? Well, I never said it'd be finished in your lifetime. <laughs> so I guess it's best to just visit places like this to enjoy nature's creation and not to take any rocks as form of souvenirs because as I've said, it's nature's property. Alright, I think it's also important to mention that since these basalt columns are formed from lava, you can actually find basalt columns in different parts of the world. It's not a thing that can only be found in this place. This place just happened to be developed into a tourist spot that we decided to visit. <laughs> but it was fun and exciting to say the least, except maybe for that hanging bridge because I'm definitely afraid of heights. Now, after we've explored Prismas Masalticos, uh, the place was actually smaller than I expected, we then went on to Bosque de las Ruchas. When we arrived, we were already hungry so we decided to eat first. And guess what we ate? Ruchas. Or in English, Trouts. After that, we decided to take a stroll around this small plaza surrounded by restaurants and souvenir shops. It kind of looks like the place is ready for some festivities and dancing. We then went outside and walked around the park. The atmosphere here kind of reminds me of some eco parks back in the Philippines, with the visitors, a lot of different plants and flowers, and sometimes a river or a lake. These kinds of places are among my favorite places to visit because they make you feel that you are connected with nature. They can have some sort of healing vibe with them and sometimes they even have interesting spots. For the Bosque de las Truchas, I think the interesting spot would be this pool or lake. I actually don't know which one it is. <laughs> anyway, here you can catch your own trucha, then have it weighed and paid afterwards. But the interesting part for me is that underneath this lake, there is said to be a sunken church that can only be seen by the devotees. And if your devotion is not strong enough, then you won't see it and have to settle for this cross instead. I am not a devotee, but I actually thought of putting my phone underwater to see if there was an actual church there. But I didn't know if it was allowed and I also noticed that there were a lot of underwater plants so even if I did put my phone underwater while it's recording, then it still won't be able to see anything. I guess I just have to level up my devotion then. After that, we took another stroll but noticed that it's already late in the afternoon as the sun is already low. so. We decided to go back. And that would be it for this vlog. The next video would be the last one for the series, so I hope you guys would look forward to it until the end. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>